Democrat Becca Ballant is among the nearly 80 new U.S. House lawmakers in the 118th Congress and Vermont's sole legislator in the chamber. She's also the first woman, an LGBTQ person, to represent Vermont in the House. She told C-SPAN about her family's journey to upstate New York from her birthplace in Germany. My dad was in the service, and so he went to college ROTC. He came here as an immigrant, and then he was stationed in Germany. So he was actually born when there was still uh, an East Germany and a West Germany, born in Heidelberg, West Germany, uh, on a, on, in a hospital affiliated with the base there. Where did you grow up? I grew up in, mostly in upstate New York, um, so around the Albany area and then in Westchester County outside of New York City. How did you get to Vermont? Oh, well, I, um, I took a job rock climbing um, and came out for a summer, fell in love with Vermont and realized that I wanted to live there full time. It was one of those moments when I really felt like I'd come home to a place that I'd never been before and uh, ended up moving shortly thereafter. Are you still a rock climber? You know, I don't climb as much as I used to because of my schedule, but I'm an avid outdoors woman for sure. And what do you like about the outdoors? It is my uh, place to recharge. It's a place for me to get grounded. I always, always say I'm not a very religious person, but I'm very spiritual. And so I do try to get in the woods every day. And uh, in Vermont, that's pretty easy to do, luckily. How does it help you with this job? It's everything for this job. I, I couldn't do this work without getting time in the woods. It is a place where I get connected to my sense of awe, something that is larger than myself. And I think if you are gonna get work done in politics on really hard issues, like for me, housing, mental health supports, um, you really need to feel connected to something larger than yourself because you, you have to have a sense of purpose. On your website, it shows a picture of you riding a motorcycle. Yes, yes. You ride? I do. I do ride. I love to ride. Um, it requires hyper focus, and that is another way for me to, to turn off, off my brain. I am, um, what I often say, I have a squirrel brain. I'm always thinking. I'm always chewing on an idea. It's very difficult for me to turn off, so uh, it's either in the woods with my dog or on the motorcycle. And. Um, it's pretty fun to be a tiny woman on a motorcycle, actually. How tall are you? I'm about five feet, 97 pounds. And what, do you, what sort of motorcycle do you ride? I just ride a little Honda Rebel. Um, I always said I wanted to be able to pick up the bike when I drop it. And so obviously the larger the bike, when you're tiny, it's harder to, to pick up on your own. I like to be as self-reliant as I can. So. Do you ride in a group or is it Mostly is by solo? myself, mostly solo. Um, you know, we have some really beautiful back roads in Vermont and when you're, you're out there on a Saturday or Sunday morning on the back roads and you smell the hay and uh, you hear the birds, it's, it's wonderful. Tell us about your family. So my wife is an attorney, and, but we always say she's a, an attorney by day, aerial fabric artist by night, so she does a lot of circus performing and she's also um, an opera singer. And so we are, we're an interesting bunch and I have two um, kids my son is 15 and my daughter's 12, and they are really creative. Um, we always say they're very spicy. You must have a lively household. Very lively. <laughs> Tell us, describe what a typical day is like. Oh my gosh, lots of ideas. We talk about ideas constantly um, at the dinner table. Um, sometimes it will go on for hours afterwards around the wood stove or out um, you know, walking around our neighborhood. We have a, an incorrigible labradoodle named Wheelie who's always mixing it up. Um, we laugh a lot. That's an, another thing that I was just saying um, to a dear friend yesterday. She said, what do you wish you saw more of in politics? And I said, I wish people understood that they need to be able to laugh at themselves and they need to find a community in which they can laugh together because basically we're trying to do really hard work and if you focus all the time on the hard stuff, you forget the joy in the work that you're doing. So I try to laugh a lot. Are you finding that community to laugh with here I, in Congress? I am. Who are some of those members? Oh my gosh, the incoming class of um, the 118th Congress is pretty special. So uh, Morgan McGarvey, Delia Ramirez, uh, Maxwell Frost, Greg Kassar, uh, Sydney Kamlager, Jill Takuda, these are all people that, that I have laughed with. I did karaoke the other night with Jasmine Crockett. I'm really trying to remind people we have to keep our sense of, um, of humanity. 
and we do that often through laughter. What's your karaoke song? Oh my goodness, well, I've got a few. Um, for my, wood, my Midwestern friends, I love Journey, Don't Stop Believing, but my go-to is often ACDC, um, You Shook Me All Night Long. Okay, so what does that say about you? Well, I think it says a lot about me. I think it says that I like, um, I like to be in motion. I like uh, loud uh, uh, cacophony around me. Um, I'm very proud to be an out queer woman. I think it speaks to that. I was laughing the other night with a friend. He said, you could pick anything and you picked ACDC. I was like, yeah, like power rock. I'm reclaiming my you know, 15 year old self who didn't necessarily feel comfortable in her, in her own skin. But now, now I am. What or who got you interested in politics? You know, I didn't really have any role models or, or mentors. Um, I didn't come from a family that had any experience um, in politics. My, my dad, as I said, was an immigrant, my mom working class. The story of Shirley Chisholm's run for the presidency like just captivated me. Um, I, I always followed her career when she was elected to Congress, and I thought, what kind of bravery does it take to do that as a black woman at that time? And then when she ran for the presidency, I would just listen to you know, clips of her, her speeches. I still do, actually. You ask, like, how do I recharge? If I'm feeling very down about the state of the world, I'll go to YouTube and I'll listen to Shirley Chisholm you know, clips because she had an incredible sense of purpose, but she also knew who she was, and she never doubted that she belonged in Congress, that she was entitled to run for president, and that inspires me. So people like that, uh, June Jordan, um, uh, excuse me, Barbara Jordan, um, Bella Abzug, these heroes of mine, but in terms of like why I've always been a political junkie, like I read the newspaper when I was, you know, in fifth grade constantly, I just, I always loved it. Anybody in your family like that? Um, my son is a lot like that, and my dad is, though, um, you know, my dad will always say, I'm glad that you're willing to run for office because, you know, I, I do, wouldn't want to do that because it's very exposing, right? It's very exposing. But. What did your dad say when you were elected to this seat? Oh my gosh, so proud, so proud. And I mean, he just keeps pinching himself because as a, an immigrant coming to this country, never imagined, right, that I would be in this position. But I think about when I was very first elected to office, which was in my state legislature, what was really sad, it was for the first, I would say year or so, he would call me and say, you know, are you getting hateful messages yet? Are you getting hateful mail? You know, or he would say, have they, have they slashed your tires yet? And that was his way of showing concern. And he felt like being an openly gay elected official, he was very concerned about um, my health and safety and my, my family's security. Um, I don't get those questions very much anymore, though he's, he, of course he worries his, his daughter's now serving in Congress, but I think um, he's delighted, as is my mom. My mom was adorable during orientation. She would say things like, oh, Mark Kelly just walked by me. I think I saw Gabby Giffords in the elevator. Like, amazing, right? And the fact that I'm able to give my whole family, but also my whole community, and my whole state, because I'm the first woman ever to represent Vermont. Like, I feel like I'm giving people a window into my life here, and that's really nice. 